Welcome to Casebag Watches. My name is Tim and in this episode I present you a very special watch collection. It's not my own. It was sent to me, images and text, by Leo, a viewer of the channel. Leo, thank you very much. And it's a very, very, let's say, very special collection with tons of personality in it. And very unusual a collection without Omega Speedmaster, without Rolex Datejust, without you name it, the, the, the common watches we see all the time. Very special here. And But first I thought, hmm, do I have to do this? Is this interesting for me? Because at, at first glance I saw only a, small, a few small old watches and not so appealing. And then I had a second look and then I thought, wow, this is very special. Let's do it. And Leo sent me a well-written text. I couldn't write it better and so I read a little bit um, from from my papers and so excuse me if I, if I look at them um, Okay, let's start here. I am collecting watches for about three years now And I feel that this four-piece collection is complete and that I found my watch identity now I went through all kind of phases pilot watches became cool So I got a Stova Flieger 40 millimeters and it taught me that chasing trends is not satisfying and that 40 millimeters is too big and uncomfortable for my small 16.5 centimeter wrist. And then he bought a Dan Henry 1970, huge hype, and <laughs> which taught me that micro brands can lock quality. And more important that I don't like thick watches. And then I had a phase where I was interested in high accuracy and I got a Bulova high frequency quartz and Longines VHP, which taught me that accuracy is great, is a great future, but ultimately not that relevant for my taste. And then he's summarizing here his five collecting habits. Let's go, go through them quickly. I like vintage. Vintage. <laughs> I do enjoy signs of wear on a watch. Second, I don't wear anything over 36 millimeters, but this is very special, very rare to find people with this with this habit. I like my watches smaller. I don't mind going as low as 33 millimeters. Third, I have thinness features. I find thin watches highly appealing and comfortable. Um, they are comfortable, in fact. Fourth, legibility and simplicity. Five, variety. Um, while the first four points are the rules of the collection, so to speak, I want as much variety as possible. You will find that all of my watches are from different decades, different brands, have different dial, different strap colors, and so on. A brief tour through horological history. And then he bashes other collectors. <laughs> and they need a diver, a chronograph, a GMT, a dress watch. And I think this is nonsense for me because I hate swimming, let alone diving. I cannot stand chronographs. This is the first time I've heard this. I cannot stand chronographs. I don't like the three crowns that come, that come with it. The big second hand that blocks the 12 o'clock view. I just don't like them. And I have never found myself in a situation where I would need a stopwatch anyway. Um, cooking. Okay, this is this, these are his his five collecting habits, and now let's let's um, examine his watches. Um, H. Moser was founded by Heinrich Moser, I guess. Heinrich Moser, Swiss, oh, very old Swiss company, and he describes his watch, his Moser, as follows. I find the thought to wear and use a 100 year old watch very pleasing. It's absolutely beaten up and runs terrible. <laughs> I think you can see this on the image. It loses two minutes per day, but I don't care. I love the look of it and it's my weekend watch. I do not baby this watch in any form. I wear it quite a lot and to all occasions. I love that. I love that. Because this should be a watch to baby, but Leo doesn't baby it. It has to, has to. He has to go through the through his days and you can flip the case open and remove the movement which is which is great for cleaning the dust that assembles under the glass quite frequently what i find interesting about this watch are the hands usually a watch has a coherent set of hands uh, for example two dolphin hands or two leaf hands etc but not this watch it has a breguet minute hand and a syringe hour hand to all appearances, the hands look equally old and used. So I think this is the original hand or was at least attached at the same time. Okay, what do I think about that watch? Um, I'm a little bit jealous, I guess. I think every watch collector or every watch collector who likes vintage pieces, sometimes we have the idea to buy a really old piece. I mean, my oldest watch was from 1947 and I felt very good with that. But from the 20s and 30s, Buying parts for that watches, it's impossible, it's impossible. And the problem with them 
is that they are beaten up. Okay, if you see a a H Moser 1920 and the dial is in perfect order, then it's a fake, a refurbished dial, or what else? And this is no, nah, it's not the same thing for me, I guess, and for other collectors as well. And so you have to accept patina. You have to accept patina if you want a 1920 or 1930 watch. And this is for me personally, it's my opinion. It's for me, it's a problem. I love vintage watches, but I hate patina. Oh, very strange. So the best watch for me is a vintage inspired brand new watch. But Leo likes and accepts the patina and, and, and I found this very, very compelling. By the way, I'm wearing my old Amiga Constellation from 1962 from my granddad and then my dad owned it and he gave it to me. Okay, let's go uh, to the next watch. Uh, by the way, one more word um, about those old watches. They are absolutely affordable. You can't say cheap, you can't pick up a uh, that sort of watch on eBay for let's say 100 US dollars sometimes yes but then as he said it runs terrible and you have to accept this as well but okay yeah I, I get the idea behind it and Leo writes this watch is a technological rock star it has the caliber 120 which would have been sent its second best caliber in its days the watch is fully serviced and runs at an amplitude of 270 and at plus three seconds a day consistently. Show me one watch from the 50s that can do that. Omega Constellation, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. It runs better than most new EDA watches. And I appreciate its thinness and the simplicity of the brown gold dial composition. The light breaks wonderfully over the crisp zenith star at 12 o'clock. Yeah, as you may know that I'm a big fan of Zenith or Zenith because they make so great accurate watches and in my opinion they are underpriced, they are underrated and so you can buy them at very good prices and then you have quality near to Rolex, over Rolex, equal to Rolex, I think equal to Rolex or sometimes over. Um, sometimes they offer more quality than Rolex. It's very, it's very fascinating, interesting brand. It's in it. and rich history, rich tradition, great designs, and so um, I fully agree that this is a good pick. This is perhaps my everyday watch, or the watch I wear the most. It's a Seamaster with a Bulova licensed tuning fork movement, and runs about plus 25 seconds per month. Everybody knows what a tuning fork movement is. Perhaps not. So let me uh, give you a short explanation. I'm not a technical expert when it comes to watch movements, but I understood um, that every watch movement needs something to control the velocity of the hands, of course, obviously. And so it needs a part who gives the beat rate. Okay. And in a mechanical watch, this is the balance wheel. The balance wheel defines the beat. And in a quartz movement, obviously it's the quartz, an electrified by battery, electrified quartz, which gives the beat to the watch. Okay? And tuning forks, same thing. A tuning fork, there is a tuning fork in the watch and it gives the beat and it's electrified by a battery as well. And the funny thing here is, let's say, 10 years ago in, in music, we, we used tuning forks to tuning the instruments because they were more accurate as, um, the modern pieces now they are super accurate and fast and you can switch them on on stage and it's very easy and the tuning forks for complicated to handle but super precise super accurate okay um and leo's explanation here is very interesting it's very fascinating in its day this would have been one of the most accurate watches available and, and omega thought it will be the future but then quartz came along, of course, and tuning fork watches came, uh, became a road not taken. And if you never had a tuning fork watch, they hum like a very high-pitched mosquito, um, which you can hear unless you put it close to your ear or on a table, which becomes a sound body, and then you can hear a clear, loud tone. I mean, this is this is very interesting. Watch on the table, and then the 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 tail becomes a bee, sort of bee. Um, the case also vibrates if you touch it on the glass. But what I find the most special about it is the seconds hand. Like a spring drive, Psycho. Like a spring drive, the seconds hand is perfectly smooth and there is something mesmerizing about it. Yeah, I can, I can imagine this. I consider the dial of this watch near to perfection. I have a weakness for linen dials and it has a very fresh look that comes from 
this lovely blue linen with the perfectly white hands. But it also has crazy accents like the bold red Omega logo and the aged yellow date window. It's a stunning watch. Yeah, I've learned something here. I saw the image of the watch and I th thought, well, tuning fork Omega. And to be frank, I wasn't fascinated. I wasn't interested in this type of watch. But with this description and the, the, the hum, the watch on the table, the, the vibration you can feel, then this is, this is very beautiful. Very beautiful to read. And now I absolutely understand the fascination of the watch. I've never owned a tuning fork, but um, you can bet I will pick one up. Extremely, I'm extremely interested in that. This is the flagship of my collection, writes Leo. It is absolute orological excellent. It has the 1030 movement, which was the thinnest movement in the world for 60 years from 1955 until 2014. 1.6 millimeters. This is crazy. 1.6 millimeters is is this. This is very, very crazy. The movement is so good that Vacheron, Vacheron <laughs> still uses it to this day in slightly upgraded form. The watch is 4 millimeters thin, 18k yellow gold, and the movement is finished to Geneva Hallmark. Everybody knows what Geneva Hallmark means? It's a sort of quality mark. A manufacturer has reached some 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 benchmarks to get this this Geneva Hallmark. Okay, Leo writes then. When I first put on this watch, I instantly knew that I have found what I really like. It is so thin, light, so flat on the wrist. It feels and looks incredible. Winding is an absolute joy. I had never known winding can be so smooth compared to the H Moser, which feels like turning a lawnmower. <laughs> and it's a neat which has a bit of resistance and bounce back when you wind the crown. This is like winding air. This watch is also incredibly quiet. The H Moser is so loud that you can hear it in the room when it's silent. The Vacheron is as simple as you can make a watch. It does not even have hour markers. I read this watch based on the 12, 3, 6, 9 points and the corners. And the corners are 7 minutes, <laughs> 23, 37 and 53. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. But when it works, okay. And I do have the original box and papers for this watch and it was sold in 1980 in Torino, Italy and I bought it online from an Italian jeweler. Okay, that's all. This is Leo's collection and Leo, thank you very much for sending this in. I've learned a lot from your collection. I had to read an article about the Geneva Hallmark. I had to finally understand what is a tuning fork movement. I was, I had a clue but I wasn't so, so sure if it, if it was right. And yeah, and I think we all can learn that you don't have to follow trends. You should check trends in my opinion, but then you can say, no, it's not for me. I hate the three crowns of a chronograph, for example, and you can you can live with this perfectly fine. And I've learned um, that people accept and enjoy patina. And I don't know if I can manage that. I think not. But uh, yeah, I respect that. And I understand now why, why it gives um, enjoyment. To, to collectors like Leo. <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> By the way, excuse my rather tired look. I was on stage, I played with my band last night and the promoter was very satisfied and he ordered champagne, yes. And do I like champagne? <laughs> I, I think so, yes, I think so. And I was in bed at four o'clock, but okay, never mind. And now let me thank you very much for your attention. If you want, please join me on Instagram. I show there my watches, tailoring projects and other things I find interesting and funny. And if you find my videos useful, please consider subscribing. It's a great help and encouraging for me. And now let me thank you again and until next time. Okay, next watch. 1980 Vacheron, Vacheron Constantin. This is so hard. 1980 Vacheron Constantin, Vacheron Constantin.